So Hotel California, absolutely, you know, a landmark solo in rock guitar history kind of thing. So it's a big one, and it's really disciplined playing going on here, especially at the end when you get into all those harmonies. But what I'm going to do here is break the lesson into two parts. So today in this lesson, we're going to go over both solos, because it's two guys playing it, right? Don Felder plays half of it, and Joe Walsh plays the other half. So we'll split that up. We'll teach all that up to when they get into the um, and we'll do all those arpeggios in a different lesson. The song's in D, D major or B minor. It kind of feels like B minor. A lot of it is, is played in that first position pentatonic box and a little bit up here and then it kind of jumps up the neck a little bit but we're going to start here on the B on the G4 and we're going to slide up to G11 and then we're going to go to B10 and B12. And on B12, we're going to do a step and a half bend up to the D note here on B15. So we're going to hold that note. And we don't drift it down. Don't do that. And then we kind of mute that with our right hand. Then we're... Um, there. I'm not going to call every fret because, you know, if you're looking to play this, you probably already know the frets. And I mean, it doesn't jump around that much, but that's B11 to B12. So. So then we're down to G9. And then we're going to do this lick. So we're here, and then here. And then to B7, so G7, G9, B7, back to G7, and here on D8, which is kind of cool, because the chord there is, it's like an F sharp 7, so, you know, this is what this solo is all about, it's all about landing on chord tones. You probably already know this, but Don Felder does his own kind of lesson on this, but I find that it doesn't really break it down enough for a lot of people. Plus, there's things he's doing in that lesson. Uh, there's one link in particular that we'll get into later that he plays completely different now than he did on the recording. So we'll get into that later. So far, we've got... When you do that lick, you don't want to do this. Right? You don't want to get that chord, though, because you get that kind of... That horrible third dissonance, you know? and in this song you don't want to detune your B string. You need the B string to be right on tune. So what you want to do there is go. You want to hit that, and have a little bit of your finger left over to come back to the G string. Kind of rolling there, and you're gonna put a little band on that. Just don't go. Go. And then we're going to come down to here, G4 to G6, and it sounds like he's picking on those, well pulling that one off, but pick, pick, and then bending here on D7 to the B flat. And then we're going to kind of release that and trail it down. All right. And then we're going to come back up here into this shape. And uh, we're going to do this. So we're going to rake into that. And we're going to do the same thing. We want to roll that note. And then here, a lot of guys will go, which comes later, but the first one is. And then we go. So you rake the first one. That's a pull off to uh, D7 instead of D8. You do it twice. And then we're going to get into the bending licks. And Really, this is what this song's all about. It's all about bending accurately. If you're weak in that area, 
you know, this is going to be like the old dying cat thing, right? You have to really, really hit these bends accurately. So after this, we're going to come here. So we're here on uh, B10, and we're going to bend up here to E10, the little finger, and bend that back down. And then we're here, and then we're going to bend up to this note. And then we're going to go, so it's uh, E7, B7, and then we've got a big bend here. We're bending up to the E note. And then we're going to release it quietly and play E10. And then we're going to do a pre-bend and bring that down to E7. And then we're going to do this. We're going to bend here on B10, full step bend. And then we're going to do a, a little upstroke on E10 and bend that B10 back down. And actually, we're going to pull that off. Don't pick that. Pull it off. And then we're going to do this little click thing, just a, just a down up. Whatever strings you want, I kind of go on the B and the E. Just that. And then we do this. So a bend on G9 to E10. So we're getting, we're getting that third of the D chord. And it's kind of staccato, so it's quite short. And we bend back down on G9. And then just G7 to G6, back to G7. And then we're going to go... So we're going to half step bend on B7. And you know, in the live version, and I'm not sure about in, in the lesson that, that he does, but um, I know in the live version a lot of times you'll hear him go... You know, he's going to that major third there, but on the record it's definitely the minor third. Then we're going to finish off his part by going up to the seventh, and then to the E. And then he's going to go put that vibrato on it. The vibrato is really important to get that even there. And that's the end of his first little bit. And then Joe Walsh is going to come in. And when Joe Walsh comes in, he's got like a chorus on his sound. And for me here, I'm using a compressor on both sounds. And I just flipped the chorus on for the Joe Walsh bit, right? So trying to be authentic with the sounds. Then he's going to come in and do that same lick. And then he's going to carry it on, though. Just doing the Chuck Berry thing. And then... And then he does his...
And then he's going to do this lick where he's up on G11 and he's going to rake into this. He's, he's bending up to the A note on G14 from G11. Kind of drifts it down. So it's the big bend. And then here on G9, G11, and then G7 with with that bend going down to the root note on D9. Great lick. That's probably my favorite lick. Well, second favorite lick of the solo. A lot of guys will do it here. And you can do it. There's no problem. It's just a different sound. It's a little thinner. This is kind of... Pretty sure that's where he's doing it. So after that... He just does just a bend on B10 to the E7. And then that. A slide up from B10 to B12 to E10. And then he does this chromatic look. Pulls off the first one, picks the last two. And then he does another one of those. And now we're going to position shift here. So we're going to come up to G14, to B12, to B15. It's a gradual bend there. And we're going to shift again. That's B17 to B15. And we're going to do this. So it's just a bend on B17. Little finger here on E17. And then just back and forth between B17 and B15. And then we're going to do the coolest lick in the song. So you come kind of bending on B17 and chromatically up from E15, E16, E17. And then we're going to do a full step bend here on E17. And we're going to be bending both the E and the B string. This is the tricky part, right? And then we're going to kind of deaden that. I'm going to come down on the B string. So a number of things can go wrong when you do that. That was pretty clean. You can wind up going, you know, hitting both notes. Or you can wind up getting a piece of that G string too if you're not careful. So that's going to take some work for a lot of guys. So, it's short, right? See, you can hear me flipping off that G there sometimes. I didn't that time. I did that time. You can hear that that little thing, right? So you don't you want to avoid that, and uh, that's going to take some practice. Put a little vibrato on that, then it's. We do that bend again, B17 to E17. And then we're going to make sure we mute the E string there. Because we're going to go... And we don't want to go... You know, that sounds awful, so we've got to make sure we go... And then we're out of that note. And we just make sure we're playing the B string there. And we bend that down. Do it again. Bend it down again. And here. Which is a bend on E17. 
And that just holds because now Felder comes back in. But there is one little note Felder does there in that lick. Here. When Joe Walsh goes, there's somebody, I don't know who's doing it, but there's another one of those. And if you watch my demo, you can see me doing that. That kind of confused me for a long time. So I thought he might be going. You know? But it's another guitar that's doing that, though. So now we take the chorus off because now we've got the Felder lick coming back in. And while Joe Walsh does that, Felder goes. And I'm not sure if he's going. That one's got vibrato, and this one I'm not so sure. There's not so much vibrato on it. So you can bend that note, or you can just... I think in the demo I went... And I put a little vibrato on it anyway. And then, we're going to do this lick. On E10. E10 and B13. Just that... Again, it's like a Chuck Berry thing. And then we're going to go... Just a slide down from G11, G9, G7. And then D9, D8. And make sure you get that and don't go... Okay, don't do that. Get that one. Get the B flat. And then the next note is here. The B flat on B11. And live, he does this. He slides into that, but on the record it sounds more like it just kind of comes out of nowhere. You could do it there. And then Joe Walsh comes back in. That's just up here on B17. He's definitely doing that vibrato stuff on it. That's a 100% feel. Like No two guys are going to play that the same, so you just do the best you can on that. And then we're going to go on B10, G11, down to 9, 7, G9, G7. And then back up. And now we get into this harmony lick before the arpeggio is at the end. It's crazy because I'll show you how they do it on the record. First of all, we'll do the Felder harmony. And on the record, this is what I'm hearing. Basically, what you're doing is... those thirds going down like you're bending the first one and make sure you let go of that third the G string before you hit that you don't want to go you want to go and mute that G string and then the next one will be which is G14 B14 same thing. You don't want to go. You want to cut them short. And then this next one, you want to kind of do, do that roll again. G12, B12. And then you got options. You could go down here. But I chose to go up here. So. That's D16, G14, and then D14, G12. And then we're going to finish the lick off by going here on A12 to D12, and then slide down. OK, 
connected to A10, A9. And slide back up. I'm going to finish it off by doing this. Just up on E14, E12 to E10. Just a bend on G12. Ending on the third of the D chord there, right? So the whole thing. So let's stay with that. Now that's what I hear on the record, but live, and in that lesson that he does, he doesn't do it that way. He does it this way. going to go here on B13 and to E10 and now he's going to bounce everything off either the D note on D12 or the A note on A12 so he's going to go to down to the D then he's going to go B12 B10 now he's going to bounce stuff off of the A He's just going to go here, G12, G11. The upper strings are going... Now we're going to do the same look as before. But instead of coming up to here, the B, we're going to come to the third. Actually, it doesn't do a chord. That. And then we're going to end it like this. So we're up here in E14, and then E10, B10, and then full step bend on G12, bend it back down to G11. So that whole lick is going to be like this. as opposed to so who knows why they changed that maybe this one that's a lot easier to play than and I suppose you know it's just uh, Maybe they thought the harmonies didn't sound right live. So now down to the Joe Walsh part there. This will be the last one. So we're just about out of here. On the recorded version, Joe Walsh does this. He's in the B minor pentatonic position one. And he's starting on G9 with a bend and then to E7, and then B7, B10, and then he goes down here to D7, to B7, and then G7 to G9, and then just B9 to B7, A9 to D7. And ending on D7. And then he finishes it off by doing this. B7. B10, pull off, full step bend on G9, ending on the D note on G7. So that now is 
the original version that's on the record. I mean, all of this is just my opinion, as far as I can tell. Now live, he does it a bit different. Live, I'm hearing this. So there's only two things that are different. Instead of going... Instead of doing that, he's going... And then we do the same thing from there on in. And then we end it differently. So instead of going, he goes up on E10 to E7 to B10. And the same ending there. as opposed to the original version, which is... I don't even know if anybody cares about this, but what I did in the demo was I did the original version. So, whatever way you want to do it. So that's going to wrap it up for part one of this lesson. And make sure you watch part two, because... We'll get into both of those harmony sections. I hope you get something out of this. I know it's a long one, but there's a lot to cover. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.